Hey guys, good morning. You remember how excited I was when the Korean barbecue came into my house? Like a full pack of entire Korean barbecue menu showed up at my door. That was like Chinese New Year morning for me. But today, I just got a message. Your package is ready to be picked up. Let me go get it. Oh, this is so intense. Look how big this box is. This Wagyu inside. It's like unboxing like, a, like an Xbox. The Wagyu shop. Thank you for your purchase of Miyazaki Do. This is a guide of Wagyu. Oh, the certificate. Every single A5 Wagyu has a certificate. Otherwise, it's not real. And this you should definitely frame. Oh, oh, that marbling I thought I would only see in Japan. Now it's in my apartment. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, this is so freaking gloriously beautiful this is the beef strip loin oh my holy cow this is almost too beautiful to eat american wagyu ribeye an american wagyu strip loin to change because I was touching all the packaging. It got me all paranoid. This is lunch. Oh my God. Oh, I can't stop smiling. This, I told you this is one thing that will get me more excited than Korean barbecue would be Japanese A5 Wagyu steak. Oh, let's cook this up. And for this much meat, we got to bring out the big guns. Big Bertha. <clears throat> what up, Big Bertha? You know, before I met Big Bertha, I didn't have anything remotely close to something like this. Now I'm just like, what did I do before this? This is so versatile. Again, I don't know what the brand is. It just says diamond in the middle. So then that just means it's diamond coated. So go to your local Korean grocery store. I'm sure they have something like this. Let's do this. My plate is, is just gonna be a cutting board. That's, <laughs> that's mostly my plate. First of all, just the biggest shout out to the Wagyu shop. They messaged me last week. They were like, can we send you some Wagyu? And I think my response was first, I shopped for about five minutes. Then of course it was a definite yes, please. So they did and it came and looked so glorious. So if you guys wanna get some steaks and Wagyu delivered to you, I'll put their information down below for you. This might have been the most overwhelmed that I felt since the Korean barbecue. Even more so now. Let's dig in on some of these steak cubes. Oh, that sizzle. All I need is just a tiny, tiny bit of salt. Again, just a little sprinkle of salt. Oh my God. That familiar extreme butteriness of the Wagyu. Oh man. The juiciest bite in all the land. Man, it's just a perfect a little sear on the outside. This is definitely the happiest moment I've been in quarantine. If you've never had a Wagyu before, it's actually engineered so it's melting point, it's below your body temperature. So as soon as it touches your tongue, that process begins right away. Round of applause for that melty Wagyu. Ah, cannot say enough good things about that. That is total beef lullaby right there. These two cows are American wagons. So basically what they did was they brought the Japanese cows to the US and they bred them in the US and that's, where, and that's how you get American Wagyu. This one is the American Wagyu ribeye and this one is the American Wagyu loin. I don't think I could be happier than I am right now. Like, I don't see it getting better than this. I have reached the apex of my happiness during quarantine. This is it. Until I can get on a plane and go to Japan again or whatever, this is the happiest I will be.
and all you need is just a little bit of salt. Hey, look, I'm Asian Salt Bay. I'm so stupid. I'm so stupid when I'm happy. Mm. American Wagyu, obviously, not nearly as melty as Japanese Wagyu, but it's got a leaner, beefier flavor. That red bar, that thing just did so many crazy things to me. I really haven't um, balanced out this whole mukbang thing. For me, like when I'm eating, I just wanna eat. I don't wanna talk. When you eat with me, if you ever do eat with me, or you have eaten with me, you'll know this. I, I don't like talking and eating when I'm really into the food. Like I do it for the show, obviously, because I wanna talk about what it tastes like and all that stuff. But if I'm not filming, I'm just eating. I don't talk. I'll be in a group of people. I'll show up at someone's birthday party or whatever. I'm not talking until the food is done, until I've had enough. So it's really hard for me to like, when the really good food is in front of me, to, to eat and talk at the same time. I can't, I can't do it. I need, to, I need to get to a certain level of satisfaction first before I can start talking. Let me finish these little Wagyu cubes. Don't slouch on the American Wagyu, mm, especially that ribeye. And I still remember the first time I had Japanese Wagyu at the Rio Con in, uh, in around Kyoto. And I still count that day as the best food day of my life because that was the first time I had Wagyu and I truly, truly understood the words melt in your mouth. So that was the happiest food day of my life and probably one of the happiest day of my life because happiness in my life is typically coordinated with food. I've been wanting to make this video for a long, long time, even before the, the quarantine happened, uh, even before like this kind of format um, was forced upon me, which I'm glad it did because I actually really like doing this and this is not going to stop. So even when quarantine's over, we're, we're not going to stop doing this. We'll keep doing this as long as you guys like it. Um, but I wanted to talk about something. It's hard for me to talk about because it's not a topic I'm really comfortable with and it's not something I've talked about many times in the past. So this month, as many of you well know, uh, is Mental Health Awareness Month. May is Mental Health Awareness Month. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to talk about it. The other is that I get a lot of messages from you guys. This happens maybe a few times a day. I'll, I'll get messages. Again, I'm not trying to be rude, not responding to every single person that messaged me. It's just so many messages I can't respond to. I just physically cannot. Because I did, I, I think I, I just have to give up sleep. I just can't respond to, I try, actually tried to respond to a lot of people, but I can't. Several times a day, I will get messages from people who, who tell me, hey, uh, your food videos are, are really fun. I was in a really low point in my life and your videos pulled me through and it helped cheer me up and it made me more positive. This really means so much to me, so much to me. Because literally, I, I just, I'm, I'm being happy because I'm eating something awesome. And I told you guys, one of the goals I had when I started to make videos is to be positive, is to be uplifting. Because I feel like there's so much content nowadays where it's depressing, you watch it, you feel worse. I don't want that to be what I do. Well, I, want, I want it to be like, when people watch these videos, they, they feel better. They feel better about the world, they feel better about, about themselves. That's, that's the underlying goal of what I want my videos to accomplish. So I've been thinking about talking about this for so long because I know there's so many people out there who may be going through the same thing. A lot of you guys, when you watch my videos, you see I'm pretty happy. I'm, a, I'm in general a very pleasantly happy, positive individual. I mean, it's not like my life has always been like this where people are sending me like Wagyu, Japanese Wagyu steaks, you know? We lived in a place called China House in Knoxville, Tennessee when we first got to the US. Like we, my mom and dad earned a combined, I think like $500 a month or something. Like our first car was a $300 Volkswagen that kept breaking down. So most of my life was spent like that. I mean, eventually money-wise it got better for us, but we were never like well off. We were never even really comfortable. From there it was to college and then a basement apartment in Brooklyn with no AC where I filmed weddings for $200 a day for the next decade of my life. My point is it hasn't always been this, but I've always been pretty happy. But there was a point in my life, this was my senior year of college where it was the darkest point of my life. A point where it got so dark, I didn't know what to do. I, I didn't know what to do. And here's what happened. College was kind of a, 
redefining moment for me. Like I've always been really shy, antisocial. We moved around a lot because my parents owned restaurants. So, so I never was able to grow up in a town. I didn't have steady friends. It was just always new town every couple years. And an Asian kid growing up in the Midwest, I was just really, really shy. So finally I get to college and I was the same way, really introverted for the first year. Then the second year I, I decided, I said, I wanna be social. I wanna try to break out of my shell. I wanna be extrovert. I wanna have friends. I wanna be happy. I wanna, you know, go to parties and join a fraternity. Like I wanna, I, I wanna not do what I've been doing for the last decade or so. So I became an RA, I joined a fraternity. I really try my best to make myself more social and because for some reason, like I think when I got to college where it could have been before that, the seed of depression has already been planted. I think throughout high school, especially after coming back from China, I just felt really lonely, really depressed, and not nearly as happy and carefree as I was. And obviously it makes sense because you're growing up, you're not gonna be the same carefree kid you always were. So I get to college and I'm thinking like, you know what, I, I don't wanna be miserable anymore. I wanna have friends, like I wanna go on dates. I don't wanna feel lonely anymore. So that's what I did and I became really, really social. And I became pretty popular. And all this was was really new to me. People liked me, I had a lot of friends, I was doing really well in school. Um, our restaurant at that point was, was actually doing quite well, so money really wasn't an issue anymore. And it wasn't like I was splurging, it was just like, hey, if I occasionally want a Domino's pizza at midnight, I can do that. So everything was going great and I was getting what I wanted, which was I wanted to be more friendly, more social, I wanted to have more friends, I wanted to go on dates. I've had all this. But my senior year of college, I remember going to college and thinking, I am so miserable. I am just so freaking miserable and I have no idea why. Like why am I so unhappy right now? And I couldn't explain it. Like, was it like I wanted more money? And it wasn't really that. It wasn't the popularity, the friends thing, because I had that. So what was making me so miserable? So I started to kind of look externally for things that like actual things that maybe I don't have yet that, that I could have and could potentially make me happier. And I was looking at people as almost examples, like if I was more like this person, I bet I could be happy because they seem really happy. And I remember there was a friend of mine, my senior year, he was uh, working with me also as an RA and uh, he seemed to have everything together. Like everyone loved him, like good looking, popular, had a girlfriend who loved him. And to me, this guy had it together. This, this guy was gonna be my model of happiness. Like if I could get a girl who loved me as much as his girlfriend loved him, or maybe I just wasn't popular enough and I could be as popular as him, then I would have everything. I would be happy. It's kind of crazy because I feel, I feel a little um, mixed emotions right now because I'm kind of like reliving what I was going through and it is kind of bringing me down a little bit, but then like I take a bite of this, it just makes me happy, you know? Sometimes a really good bite of food, it's just, it's gonna clear your mind. It's not, it's gonna relieve all your stress, at least for the next five seconds or so when this thing is in your mouth. I like, you can't be that miserable when you're biting into a Wagyu steak. It's just like impossible. Anyway, one night we're in the dorms and I remember it was a really cold and snowy night and I was up, I don't know why I was up, I was up until 2 a.m. I was talking to someone else and all of a sudden I see campus police entering our dorm. Being an RA, I go up and ask him, I'm, I'm like, what's, what's going on? Why are you guys here at like two o'clock in the morning? They told me, oh, this person didn't show up to class all day. And the person they were talking about was my friend. The person I thought was the most together guy I know. And that night was pretty traumatic. I'm not gonna go into details about what happened during that night, but it was pretty crazy. And the next day we found out that he had indeed taken his own life. And it was such a sad moment, obviously for, for everybody, his family, his girlfriend, every and all of us that knew him because he was such a well-liked guy. Obviously just, just the saddest moment. And, and for me, it was sad and it was confusing because I'm like, what? He's the happiest guy I know. Like this guy is the happiest guy I know. Like what could possibly have caused him to want to do that? Like no one had a clue. Not a single person knew what he was struggling with. Everyone had the same perception of him as I did was this guy was so happy. He was so together. He was about to graduate. He's going to get married. He's got a teaching job lined up and why the heck, why did it happen? Anyway, fast forward a month or so and I, I'm personally struggling in school. Like I can't pass classes. Like I'll, I'll go to class and 
I, I can't hear anything and I can't comprehend anything. So I just started to skip classes. I started to not go to class and the, and the professors were kind because they knew what happened. They were just, they were trying to cut me a break, but I just stopped going to classes. And I think that semester I dropped down to like six credits or something like that. I had like two classes left and one of them was like basic Chinese. Um, but I just couldn't go to class. I, I didn't want to get it out of my dorm room. I would just sleep all day. I would just go to my room, turn off the lights, and I would just stay there for like, like days on end. I wouldn't go out. I would go and get food. Otherwise, I would just sleep all day. That's, I will just lay there all day. So of course my friends, um, they're concerned. They're like, oh, um, you okay? You're not coming out? Like what's, what's going on? And I'm just like, no, I'm fine. I'm just tired. I don't want to hang out with anybody. And that was the semester where I cut off um, I guess relationships with, with almost everybody. It's just like, I didn't want to talk to anybody. Um, I just want to stay in my room. I was rude. I was very short with people. I definitely burned a lot of bridges, a lot of good relationships. And I just didn't want to see people. I didn't want to talk to people. And I still like, I was still struggling with, with confusion. Like I'm really depressed and I'm really confused. And I don't know why I'm so depressed and confused. And the thing with me and my background is that Asians, like we, we don't love to show weakness. Like we, we were kind of taught since we were young to like, don't be weak. Like mental illness, that's like not really a thing. Back then, like this wasn't even really as big of a topic as it is today. Like even, so back then I, I didn't know what I was going through. I didn't know, I mean, I knew I was depressed. I knew I was confused, but I didn't know this was like, like something really serious. And I think for me, it was really not smart to see someone else as, as an example of like, okay, if I'm, this person, I will be happy because that was a really, really dangerous mindset I had. So I stayed this way for months and I really want to thank someone. I, I thanked them before, but I don't think they realized how big of an impact they actually had on my life at that point. Uh, my best friend at the time, his name was Will Romine. And no matter how many people I, I shut out, he would always continue to come over and just, just talk like, like just force me to open the door, sit there and talk to me and just make me tell him what the heck is going on with me. And at the time, like I said, I don't, I didn't know what was going on with me. I just wasn't happy. I wasn't in the mood to talk to people, but he kept trying, kept pushing. And finally one day I'm just like, dude, like I'm really depressed. Like I, I don't know if I could go on. Like I don't, I'm just so depressed. I'm so scared and life is just too overwhelming. And I remember at that, that time, like I was still work out. I remember going running at night and I would see the cracks on the ground and they would almost seem like demons to me. It's just like something was definitely wrong with my mind. And again, I didn't know that was the case. I just thought it was something I could eventually overpower. I had a lot of self-confidence, so I was sure that whatever this was, I could overpower it. I could get through it on my own. I don't need anybody because I was always the person that people come for their problems. Not, I don't go to anybody else for problems. Okay. That's not who I was and that's not who I am. And that's just not what I did. I don't go to anyone else for problems. I can handle my own problems. So that's what I try to do. Again, that's a mistake. So finally, um, when Will kept persistently asking me what was wrong, I told him, I said, look, I don't, I don't know if I can make it. I, I don't know. At this point, I don't know what to do. And he told me he went through something like that before. And he said, you gotta, you gotta talk to people. You have to seek help. You can't do this on your own. And at that point I was desperate. Like I literally, I'm like about to drop out of college. So I went to the university counselor. It was so weird because I've brought many other people to see the counselor. I've never seen the counselor myself. So, so I see the counselor and I'm like, what do we do? And she's like, well, we just talk. And you just tell me where you're going through. And I'm like, this, this is not going to help. Like I'm not, this, I don't, I don't really see this working out. So I think I went for one session. I'm like, this is, this is just not helping. Like, what am I supposed to talk, talk to you about? I, I'm trying to ask you what's wrong with me. You can't tell me. And of course, that was the wrong mindset to have, but that's what I thought. I'm like, this is just not helping. I'm not doing it anymore. So I leave the counselor and I go to the school pastor and it's the same thing. I'm just like, I don't, I don't want to talk like, because I just want, I wanted someone to tell me what was the answer. I was looking for that, but of course no one's going to be able to tell you that because no one knows that. So finally Will was like, you know what, dude, like if you can't snap out of this, like you need to go and see um, a psychiatrist and maybe they have to prescribe you something because you can't keep going on like this. And that was like the last thing I want to do because I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not taking pills for this. Like this is something I'm, I'm sure like I can conquer. Just give me time. Again, that's 
incorrect like this. The, the more time you, 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 you stew in that mess, the more time that you sit in that dark abyss, it doesn't get better. It gets darker and worse. So eventually I'm like, you know what? I, I might have to do this. But before I do that, I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna take a semester off. Like, I don't know, like it was winter break. So I just figured I'd go home, clear my head and maybe take the next semester off. And uh, it was crazy because like, not only did I go see the school counselor, I, I, I saw the pastor, I saw like, I, I tried to become a hypnotist. I went to like some hip, like I, I took a class at Truman called Parapsychology and Hypnosis. Like. I learned how to hypnotize people because I'm like, well, maybe, maybe like there's something in my past life because I believe in that. I believe in past life, I believe in reincarnation. So I learned to be a hypnotist. And I just want to say, I'm an excellent hypnotist. Okay. After that, I hypnotized a bunch of my friends. It was crazy. But uh, yeah, hypnotism, 100% real. And I'm awesome at it. So basically, I was doing everything I can to kind of find answers. And again, trying by myself to, to crawl out of this hole. So um, winter break comes and, and I just go home. And the thing with Asian parents is, and the, and the relationship I have with my parents is that we don't really talk a lot, you know, on a, on a personal level. Like obviously they have a lot of opinions on what I'm doing and uh, they love telling me what to do, but we, and I'm speaking in general, like I think this is for a lot of Asians out there. We don't have that connection, like that personal connection, that personal, we can talk about anything kind of relationship with our parents. and. I certainly did not have that with mine. So my entire plan for winter break was just to go home, I'll work at the restaurant, I'm not gonna mention anything I'm going through, and I'm just gonna deal with it, and then maybe go back to school, most likely not. So I go back home, of course, uh, me and my parents were eating dinner for the first time in a long time, we haven't seen each other in a long time, and we're eating dinner, and they're like, oh, how's school, how's this, how's that? I'm like, yeah, it's fine, it's fine, it's, it's, everything's okay. And then like, I just couldn't hold it in anymore. I couldn't, like, there's just, I was so miserable and I told him, I said, hey, I, I want to take next semester off. I don't want to go back to school. If you tell Asian parents that you, you don't want to go back to school, that's usually a rolling pin to the back of the head. But instead, I was like really shocked. I was really shocked. Instead, they were like, okay, yeah, that, that's totally fine. You can take a semester off and just, just you know, re-examine your life. Do whatever you need to do. And I'm like, that's strange. Like, why are you guys being good about this? So then they're like, well, why did you want to take a semester off? And I just, and then I just told them, I didn't tell them every single detail because again, we didn't have that kind of relationship. Um, I just said, look, I'm just really depressed. Like I never felt like this in my life. I don't know what it is. I just, I'm so depressed. And again, they were really kind about it. They're like, okay, um, yeah, take a semester off if you need. And then, and then they suggested something to me because they were both doing a meditation practice at the time called Falun Dafa. And this was something they, they both tried to get me to practice and I absolutely did not want any part of. First of all, it's just the, the rebellious nature. I just don't like uh, my parents telling me to do something. So when they're like, go practice this meditation, I'm like, no. Like, I just don't want to do it. And I know it's good, and my mom started practicing it because then she later told me she was really, really, really depressed. Her health was deteriorating. My dad had to take her to a hospital in St. Louis to see a specialist, I think, once a month. And a lot of the stuff they didn't tell me because they didn't want me to worry, but my mom's health was so incredibly bad, and she was so depressed. And I didn't know any of this because, again, we didn't talk about this kind of stuff. And she got better because she started doing meditation, she started practicing Falun Dafa, and that's why she wanted me to practice it. And of course, I was like, no, no, I'm good, I'm good. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do anything you think might be good for me. That's like my entire mentality at the time. I'm such, I was such a kid. And I was just like, I, I just don't want any part of it. So of course, being an Asian mom, she continued to press the topic. And I've always just like very adamantly said, no, I don't need meditation. Who needs meditation? I don't need that. But at this point, like I was at such a low point in my life. Like I didn't know what I needed anymore. I didn't know what was good for me anymore. I was at a point where I was willing to try anything. And I told Will already, like if I come back um, from, from winter break and this has not gotten any better, I want to go on medication. Like I don't know what to do. So finally I was like, you know what? Fine. Let me do this meditation thing, like I, I'll do it. Like I, I don't know what it is, but I'll try it. If it works, great. If not, I, I guess it's something worth trying. So for the next several weeks, I read the philosophy behind it. I did the meditation exercises. And if you don't know, Falun Dafa is a combination of Buddhist principles and Taoist principles with five meditation exercises that you're supposed to practice. And the philosophy is good. It's based on truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance. It's basically saying you gotta be a more truthful person. You gotta be more compassionate 
And you got to look inside for things. Like, don't blame other people. Like, look inside and see, like, where you have gone wrong, which is something I didn't really do a lot back then. So after reading this for a month and doing the exercises and, and stuff, and I'm not saying this was, like, a miracle cure. Like, oh, I started doing this, and now I can, like, go back, and, and, and everything's fine. It wasn't fine. But it did open my eyes to a lot of different things I, did, I didn't think about before or I didn't realize before. And one of those things I realized was that, I, I'm not so strong after all. This was something in my life that I myself, just just based on my strength and my and my mental toughness, I'm not able to handle this on my own. And that's okay because that doesn't mean I'm weak. And that took me so long to realize because every fiber of my being since I was a kid was like, be tough, be be strong, be tough physically, be tough mentally. This is this is how you're gonna get through life. Like this is you, you are a tough person. And to be able to accept finally that, you know what, I'm not tough enough to deal with all this on my own and that's okay. It was so incredibly hard for me to accept. But once I was able to accept that, that's when I felt like I could start clawing my way back to where I was. And honestly, the meditation helps so much just to clear my head and not have to think about all the craziness that's that's like in there, you know, all the demons that I was fighting with. And to be able to study philosophy, understand more about life, really just opened my head enough to where I felt like I was strong enough to actually go back to school after break was over. So that's what I did. I went back to school and I kept up meditating. I started to actually open up to people and, and, and talk about like, this is what I'm struggling with. And this is something that I, I do need help with because I am confused and I am depressed and depression is a real thing and again, not something I sh where anyone should be ashamed of and it is something that people have to fight and people have to treat it as something that is real, as something that we do need to battle and combat and, and make an effort to squash. It's not just, oh, they're just having a bad week or a bad month or whatever, they'll get through it. It's not as simple as that and you should never treat it as simple or as lightly as that. And for me, I went back to school uh, I didn't take a full load of classes and that's why it took me five years to get my bachelor's degree. I spent one extra year in college because each semester I didn't want to put too much pressure on myself. I just took a few classes, focused my time and energy on, on me and learn how to look inside and not blame other people for conflicts or issues that might arise. Like think about like where I might have gone wrong or things that I have said where I have done that was not compassionate, was not truthful, like trying just to be a better person, you know? And it took me that whole semester and half of that summer to really kind of get back to a point where I was like, you know what? I, I feel good today. I feel like it's not so dark anymore. Things don't look as depressing. Life doesn't seem that hopeless. And that took a lot of meditation. It took a lot of studying. It took a lot of talking to people and, and reaching out and putting my pride down and, and deconstructing that wall that I built in front of me, that I built around me for so many years. And again, I wanted to talk about this for so long, especially after seeing um, all the reports of what happened in the K-pop industry with young and, and famous and, and great looking and rich and seemingly very happy individuals taking their lives. I wanted to talk about this and, and especially to people who may come from backgrounds where mental illness or depression is not seen as something that is a thing. You know, it's, it's seen as a weakness. It's seen as something you'll get over. And that's so true for Asians, especially people living in Asia. This thing could plant a seed in you and you wouldn't even know for years until all of a sudden, everything just gets too much. So I really want to talk about what happened to me and, and the struggles I've had with it because I feel like a lot of people go through this and maybe not as severe as, as what I've gone through or maybe way more severe. Don't try to tackle this on your own. Don't try to push through it. We all think we're strong, we all do, but this is not something that, this is not like, like a brick we're trying to punch through. This is way worse. This is like inside our heads, it's inside our hearts, it's inside our minds, you know? Like it, it's, an, it's such an incredibly strong, invisible enemy. It's okay to ask for help. I mean, can you imagine like Iron Man taking on the entire alien force and Thor on his own? There's no way. And come on, you're not stronger than Iron Man. Well, maybe, maybe him without the suit, but you get my point. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay to seek out help. But the one thing you should never, ever do, and I can't stress this enough, is isolate yourself. Don't ever isolate yourself. It does not get better. It only will get worse. Trust me on this. It does not get better even by a little bit. 
It'll just keep eating at you and eating at you and gnawing away until there's nothing left. And regardless of what you might think or what I was thinking, like there are people that care about you and it's okay to let them, <laughs> you know, like it's okay to let them care about you. It's okay to let them take some of that burden off you. It's okay. I mean, just think about someone that you absolutely adore, someone you absolutely love. Wouldn't you want to help them if they were going through something like this? Yes, you would. So treat yourself like someone you love. And no, the world is never a better place if you're not in it. It's never a better place. All right, like if I wasn't here, who's gonna eat 100 dumplings and scare the crap out of you at night? <sighs> so if you are going through something like this, be proactive about it. If you know someone is going through something like this, be what Will was to me, like be there for them. Even if they tell you to go away, like be there for them because they, they need that extra push sometimes. And my meditation practice, Falun Dafa, that's what really helped me. And Different things will help different people. Like things that help me may not help you. And there's no universal cure out there, but be proactive and search for something that will help you. And this is why I always defend Falun Dafa whenever someone says something bad about it. And there's a lot of propaganda coming from the Chinese Communist Party about it because the Communist Party does not allow freedom of belief in China. So there's a lot of propaganda against it. I'm sure the 50 Cent Army will be in the comment section. But for me, it helped me so much. It helped drag me back from the darkness that was in my head every single moment for years. And something else that really helped me while I was going through all this is really believing, believing. You gotta believe that no matter how dark it gets, morning will come, light will shine through. Cause life is not like a chopstick, okay? It's not gonna be all smooth sailing. It's not gonna be all good. It's not gonna be all bad. It's like two chopsticks. It's like, it's like this, you know? It's like, there's bad times, there's bad times, there's good times. There might be bad times, but there always will be good times, okay? It's never gonna be bad all the time. You gotta believe that. I know this was a really heavy topic, but it's been weighing on me. Oh my God. And what I told you guys about what I went through, I never talked about this before. Like I never talked about it. It never felt like something I wanted to talk about uh, because I also don't like being that vulnerable still. But if this whole video, if it even helped one of you guys, I'll be happy. That's, that's like, even if one person found it helpful, it was worth it. And I'll put some resources for you guys in my description box in case you are going through something like this and maybe it'll help. So now I'm gonna replenish that weight off my shoulders by eating a steak. As always, guys, thank you all so much for watching. See you next time.